You are the producer of Risk Factions. Can you tell, tell our audience a little bit about what a producer does on a game like this? So the producer, um, he sets a creative vision for the product. Um, he works with the engineers, the artists, um, QA, uh, everyone to try and um, realize that, that vision in the game space. Um, and it's, it's a tough job. And I actually, on some, in some sense, like I don't do anything like what does the producer do, does? He takes a lot of, uh, a lot of heat from everyone, but technically he doesn't really do anything cause he works through others. No, I know that's um, not true because I am a producer and a producer does something <laughs> very important. It's just always unclear what it is. We're free. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, I think that's the way sort of everyone on the team feels a little bit some of the time. It's like, what do you do? But, um, no, I, I, I do a lot of, it's actually, my job is a lot of writing. Um, I am actually pretty lucky cause I get to do a bunch of design work and not all producers get to do that. Um, and it's just making sure the team has what they need, uh, at all times to go out and make, make a great experience. And, um, yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. I think I think there's kind of there's a vision that people have, and I'm assuming it's an incorrect vision, that a game on Facebook takes a lot less time to make, or a game that lives on Facebook or is played on Facebook would take less time to make than a game on a console. And there's no way that can be true. I, I can tell you, having done both, that is patently untrue. Um, I Facebook, it especially if you're a producer, it is a it's as hard as a console game. Um, there are just different problems, but they are definitely as tricky, if not trickier. Um, I so, for instance, in a console game, work with a team, make a game, uh, work with my marketing uh, my marketing team, and they figure out a way to get the game advertised and on shelves, and it's done. With this, this is a live service, and it's you're not just designing the game, but you're designing the whole in-game economy. You're responsible for um, if the game is going to make money. Um, you've got to. There's so many little things that you've got to tune, especially sort of around the in-game economy. That's um, that, that's really, really, really critical. And that's not and, something you have to worry about on the 360 version, for example. Right. I mean, there is. 360, you, you're responsible for making a great game and getting it in on time, and then you sort of hand that off to your sales and marketing team. Um, this, you're responsible for a great game. You don't get to hand it off to anyone but yourself, and you've got to make sure it's, uh, it, it's monetizing properly and, um, you know, uh, and get works. it out. Or, and, and then maintain it, and then if anything breaks... Um, you've got your engineers there and you've got to make sure you're doing hot fixes and if they're bugs, it's just, it's like it just doesn't end. I like that so, term, hot fixes. Hot fixes, what's, yes. What's a hot fix? That sounds cool. A, a hot fix, well, it's actually not that cool. It's <laughs> if a bug gets into the game um, and it's out there live and it's, you know, there's a crash bug. I'm sure we've all played video games and there's something you've done, you've seen a bug, a glitch, something that if it's really bad, it might cause the game to crash. Um, so occasionally, you know, bugs creep into the game, especially uh, games that are sort of live services because um, you're, we're constantly updating them. Mm -hmm. And if it's bad enough, you're like, ah, this is really bad. We need to do something about this immediately. Um, then you do a hot fix and everybody scrambles to get a fix done and you got to check the fix and then you push it up to live. Otherwise, we do releases, you know, typically about once a week. So it's sort of like the virtual equivalent of blowing into the video game cartridge. Yes. Yes, <laughs> cleaning, it is. Cleaning out all the dust. Yes. Then you put yes. it right back in the Atari or, the, or Facebook, as the case would be, and continue playing. How, how, uh, how many people does it take to make a game like Risk Factions? Um, it, it takes a lot. Um, it can take anywhere from, you know, God, I, I, well, put it this way. I've heard of, uh, 
people getting Facebook games done with as little as two to five people all the way up to, um, you know, big teams like, you know, 50 people, 60 people, maybe even more, depending mm-hmm. on the scope of the game. It, it really depends on the scope and how big you want the game to be. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's just like console development. You can get little XBLA games done with a relatively small crew, but bigger games like um, Star Wars, for instance, uh, our Star Wars MMO, um, Old Republic, that had significantly more people. So, so this is a pretty sizable game is what you're saying. A lot of people worked on this one. I, I would say it, it's a... It's a medium-sized uh, team. Okay. Facebook, I think. Now, what else? What else is uh, coming out in the future? Can I ask what your next project at Playfish will be? You know, I don't have a next project right now. I'm more focused on getting, keeping Risk going, and we've got a ton of great new features that we're going to add to this. Can I ask what uh, those are? Uh, yes, uh, we're going to add more factions uh, to the to the game. Um, I, we haven't announced which factions they will be, but, uh, they're, they're coming up pretty soon and they're really, really cool. New maps, new special weapons. Um, very excited about that. Um, we've also just got some new features as well. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, ways to make the multiplayer even more interesting. Um, I, we haven't announced anything, but you're free to infer, um, what those things might be, such as, I don't know, perhaps uh, tournament play, perhaps um, different, uh, different multiplayer game modes. Um, so, yes, l- lots of interesting things. So you'll be busy with Risk Factions for a while? I, yes, in the, for the foreseeable future, yes. All right. Now, how do people find the game on Facebook, and how do they start playing it? Uh, you can do it one of a few ways. Um, I think the simplest is just go into the search bar at the top and uh, type in Risk Factions and it will pop up. Um, that's, that's probably the easiest way to, way to find it. Um, and also our, our fan page has got a, a link to the, to the game as well. And everybody should go and like Playfish, right? Well, yes, and more specifically, you should like Risk Factions, I think, is the more important like to make. Like, if I can ask you for one like, it would be that like. Like Risk Factions. Go do it now. I'm pointing at the camera. Do it. Hopefully everyone has done it now. You can do two or three things on the internet at once. Is Risk Factions a fun, playable experience for free? Can you just dive right in? Or do you think that you really need to buy one or two additional little pieces to get the full enjoyment? Well, I I mean, it it depends on your style of play. I'm the kind of guy that I want to sort of unlock everything all at once. And I want to, um, uh, you know, get have the maximum sort of arsenal and weaponry when I play uh, multiplayer so I can just destroy my opponents effectively and very quickly. Well, that makes complete sense. (laughs) I, I, I sort of paid my way through the uh the tech tree uh quickly and and believe it or not yes i actually do spend my own money on the game it's not like i have i get free unlocks or anything like that (laughs) it's yes i've i've paid extra to be able to beat people with um surprising frequency so also i've worked on the game a while so i sort of i kind of have some good good strategies under my belt but i'm assuming that you can't just pay for victory you do have to actually know what you're doing with what you buy absolutely um you cannot pay for a victory uh it's you can sort of help the odds a little bit um but yes you actually have to be good at risk to win you know and and there is a there is a luck component in in risk as well there are dice so even the best players can have some crappy dice rolls um and it's, it, it, it can definitely affect the outcome of the game. I will say one thing, and I'm just going to say this for all the, the listeners out there. Everyone complains saying, well, the dice cheat. The dice cheat. I got all these bad rolls and the dice cheat. And I just want to say, and I'm sure no one is going to believe me, but in fact, the dice do not cheat. Well, the Everyone d- remembers all of, your, all of the bad rolls that you got in a row. 
no one remembers the the huge winning streaks that you've got. So well, I always said the dice cheated in real life too. So yeah, well, you know, there it is. That's what I thought. Well, let me ask you uh, one last question here about your your um your gaming habits. Since since we are on classic game room here, what was your first video game console? I had a Atari fifty two hundred, not the twenty six hundred, but the Atari fifty two hundred. Oh, what My, a beast! Those things are huge. Oh, uh, it was it was ginormous. Um, and it was a uh, when I got it, I I what was out of my mind happy. <laughs> um, but I think Dig Dug was one of my favorite games on the fifty two hundred. Oh, Dig Dug, uh, that's a good fifty two hundred game as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a great game. So I, I guess if you had to go back, um, that was my first system, and that was my favorite game on my first system. I remember uh, I had a twenty six hundred. I had one or two friends way back when in you know, junior school or whatever that was back in the day that had the 5200. And it was like the Cadillac of game systems, at least that I was aware of at the time. It was giant. Oh, and the, and the controllers were ginormous. Oh. They had like a keypad on it and like four buttons. And it, it was insane. It was insane. Yeah, it's uh, not one of my favorite controllers, as a lot of people who watch this show know. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the 5200 controllers. but Yeah, well... It was a competent game system. Any chance to see Playfish putting uh, some games out on the Atari 5200 in the future, or are you guys uh, more forward-thinking than that? I, I think EA and Playfish are probably a little more forward-thinking than that, and I, I certainly hope uh, graphically we can do better than that. Well, we'll see. I'll see if I can't uh, talk some of you guys into at least releasing stuff for the ColecoVision or Vectrex again, but until then... Oh, Cole ColecoVision, that would be, uh, yeah... Oh, I love the ColecoVision. <laughs> but we've got Risk Factions, playable on Facebook, and you can get the Xbox 360 version. So go to Facebook, search for Risk Factions, and start playing. And, of course, like them on Facebook and send a message that it needs to come out in Vectrex. Right? Yep. And, and then also, if, if there are any uh, players out there who try the Facebook version... Um, and you want the backstory on the cats and the zombies and the robots and the yetis, um, you just go to YouTube. You can go to the EA YouTube channel, or, or I'm sure you could just, um, you can just search for Risk Factions, and all of the cinematics for the XBLA version are online. Okay. So go check those out, and then you kind of get a, a little feel for the, uh, the, the sort of mythos that we're creating. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the game or some of the additional stuff coming out? Um, I don't. I, I, I would. A couple pro tips would be um, I, I, my favorite uh, faction is the cats. Um, they're pretty badass. Uh, I, I would. I would. But I would definitely upgrade to um, the cats or the zombies uh, pretty quick. Um, good one two punch for the zombies is. Uh, uh, put out a, a flesh mob and then a metron right on that same territory, and then you're getting five bonus dice um, on attack and defense. That's pretty brutal. And then the cats, uh, the catnip frenzy uh, uh, special weapon is awesome. So anyway, two two pro tips. Catnip frenzy, zombies. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much to Spencer Brooks, producer for Risk Factions on Facebook, and everybody will be going there and liking it, and hopefully playing a game of Risk Factions, or at least dusting off that Atari 5200 soon. So thank you again. Okay, no problem. And you have a nice day. Thanks. Thanks.